I'd like to give you some unconventional thoughts on dealing with this pandemic of coronavirus or COVID-19. Now, what you're not going to get from me is a reiteration of conventional advice to wash your hands, social distancing, get tested, etc. There are better people than me who are already dispensing that advice who are much more knowledgeable about epidemiology and infectious disease. But what I want to give you are some unconventional ideas that you probably haven't heard from anyone else. Now, I'm going to be applying the kinds of principles I use in my undoctored and wheat belly programs. And that is, in those programs, we don't treat disease. We correct the factors that allow disease to emerge in the first place. Now that may sound like an academic or trivial distinction, but it's actually a huge difference. Let's take type 2 diabetes. If I were to apply conventional thinking for type 2 diabetes, a person has high blood sugar, I'll give him drugs to reduce blood sugar, insulin to reduce blood sugar, and other drugs to deal with other consequences of diabetes like coronary disease, hypertension, and peripheral neuropathy. In my approach, in the undoctrined wheat belly approach, we don't treat high blood sugars. We correct the factors that allow high blood sugars to emerge. So we remove foods that raise blood sugar, wheat grains and sugars. We address common nutrient deficiencies that allow insulin resistance to emerge vitamin D, magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids, iodine. We address dysbiosis, disruptions of bowel flora, and we reverse insulin resistance. Put all those things together and type two diabetics, by correcting the factors that allowed insulin resistance and, di and high blood sugars, typically are no longer diabetic. Do you see the difference? We're not treating the phenomena of a disease, we're correcting the factors that allow disease to emerge in the first place. Now, these strategies I wanna to talk to you about are much more advanced strategies. So I want to give you a heads up. If you want a quick and dirty answer like take echinacea or take zinc, you're not going to find it here. That's fluff. The stuff I give you, the material, the information I give you are truly potent strategies that improve your immunity, including T cell immunity against viruses. I'm not suggesting you're going to be impervious and make you do stupid things like go get exposed. But what I'm saying is take these steps and you dramatically improve immunity, including a restoration of the immune system as you age. You know, as we age, we lose immunocompetence, that is the integrity of our immune systems. That's why people who are older, in their 70s and 80s, are much more likely to die of flu, pneumococcal pneumonia, and sepsis, when the same condition, same, uh, don't apply to say somebody in their 20s or 30s. We lose our immune competence as we age. So here are the strategies that I think really help. Now, if you're following my basic wheat belly or undoctored programs, you're already wheat grain and sugar free in your diet. Why would that improve immunity? Well, several reasons. One, when you eliminate wheat and related grains, you've eliminated the gliadin protein in those grains. And gliadin induces an increase in intestinal permeability. You can actually measure a protein called zonulin that goes to higher levels in anybody consuming wheat. And when you have higher zonulin, you also have higher levels of bacterial byproducts entering the bloodstream, a process called metabolic endotoxemia. So consumption of, let's say, two slices of bread in a sandwich increase zonulin, increase intestinal permeability, increase metabolic endotoxemia, and that reduces your immune system capacity. It reduces your immunity. It makes you more susceptible to infections. Likewise, when you go uh, free of wheat, grains, and sugars, you don't experience rises in blood sugar with food. If you eat an egg, say, with bacon, or you have an avocado, your blood sugar doesn't go up. But when you eat grains, wheat, grains, and sugar, your blood sugar goes way up. And that rise in blood sugar impairs your immunity, your immune response, for several hours. So between the metabolic endotoxemia of the gliadin protein of wheat and the rise in blood sugar from the amylopectin A of grains, two reasons why uh, wheat and grain and sugar consumption impairs immunity, removing it improves it. Likewise, if you're doing my programs, you've already restored vitamin D. You're taking a dose of vitamin D, an oil-based gel cap, a dose sufficient 
to raise your 25 hydroxy vitamin D to 60 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. A typical dose for most adults would be 6,000 units, or you can, you can weight adjust 1,000 units per 25 pounds body weight. That's at least a good starting place. You do want to eventually adjust to uh, blood tests and your blood level. Uh, and that dramatically improves T cell immunity against viruses and other infections. Just those two things alone that the vast majority of people in my programs have done, wheat grain sugar elimination, restoration of vitamin D, has resulted in a large community of people in my programs who virtually never get sick. I stopped getting the flu vaccine years ago because I don't get the flu. I don't get viruses uh, every winter. When I was younger, before I did all these things, I'd get three or four viral infections a year. I haven't been sick in years. And likewise, most, not all, most of the people in my programs have had such a dramatic boost in immunity, they don't get sick, virtually never. But let's talk now about three additional strategies. And this, these are advanced strategies. If you're looking, really, if you're looking for a quick and easy answer, I would stop watching this video. You're not gonna get them here. I invite you to see the more extended conversation in my Wheat Belly blog. I'll post the link below, where I detail more about these strategies and if you really want to dive deeply on the how-tos on how to do some of these things, you'll find that in my membership on Dr. Inner Circle. But this will get you started. So number one, reverse the metabolic endotoxemia of SIBO. So I told you how wheat, the gliadin protein of wheat, causes a metabolic endotoxemia, a flood of bacterial breakdown products that set you up for infections and inflammation. Well, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, does the same thing. So SIBO is a situation where bacteri bacteria that are supposed to be confined to your colon have proliferated. Unhealthy species have proliferated. Species like E. coli, Shigella, and Campylobacter. They've proliferated and then ascended up into the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, stomach, and even higher sometimes. So you, in effect, have 30 feet of bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. Well, that's a huge load of unhealthy bacteria. Well, those bacteria live and die. And when they die, they release the components of their cell walls, especially something called lipopolysaccharide. And because of the increased intestinal permeability that is part of SIBO, this lipopolysaccharide gains ready access into your bloodstream. And blood levels of lipopolysaccharide are, are as high as 400% higher in people with SIBO. Well, that's yet another reason that SIBO, confined to the intestines, can export inflammation all throughout the body. And it explains why. This metabolic endotoxemia of SIBO explains why SIBO can show up as fibromyalgia in muscles and joints, or neurodegenerative disorders in the brain, or rosacea in the skin, or restless leg syndrome. In other words, this rise in, metabolic, in, in bacterial breakdown products sets you up for inflammation, and makes you more susceptible to infection. This means, one, deciding whether you have SIBO. You can see my video or my discussion in my Wheat Belly blog about telltale signs of SIBO. I can show you how to test for SIBO on your own without the doctor. We can also show you how to manage SIBO. But that's an undoctored inner circle type function because that's a whole lengthy conversation. It's not that tough, but it involves some real effort, some real insights, and some guidance. So that's what we try to provide. Another marvelous, spectacular strategy for enhancing immunity is to consume our lactobacillus reuteri yogurt. Why would, why would eating this yogurt? What? It's not really yogurt. You can't do this with commercial yogurt. Commercial yogurt is worthless for this effect. What we're doing is we're actually fermenting dairy or non-dairy if you choose, like coconut milk, we're using prolonged fermentation, 36 hours, in the presence of prebiotic fibers. And we do all that so that we get a massive increase in bacterial counts of two specific strains of lactobacillus reuteri. What does that do? We well, consume a half cup of this uh, yogurt a day, yogurt, not really yogurt, but it uh, looks like yogurt. It's rich and delicious, and you get about 90 billion uh, uh, bacteria, CFUs, of lactobacillus reuteri. That provokes oxytocin release from your hypothalamus that in turn reverses something called thymic involution. At least that's what we see in experimental models. In, in experimental models, uh, animals who get ox this oxytocin boost uh, increase the thymus size. Now you have to know, as we age, our thymus gland in the chest, in front of the heart, involutes or atrophies. So at age 18, our thymus glands are at their maximum potential in size and T cell immunity. 
After age 18, the thymus shrinks. We call it thymic involution. By age 65 or 70, you have very little left. Well, in an experimental model, animals given lactobacillus roideri that thereby provokes oxytocin release, return, restores thymic size back to that of a youthful animal. Now, this has not yet been corroborated in humans, but so far every observation made in mice that involves roideri and oxytocin has proven true in humans. Preservation of bone density, um, uh, uh, suppression of appetite, uh, and many other effects. It's accelerated skin healing, increased dermal collagen, wonderful effects. But specifically, uh, I believe that we can predict that rest restoration of, L of lactobacillus roteri in the intestines that boosts oxytocin can restore thymic capacity, thymic size and T-cell immunity. And the yogurt's rich and delicious and gives you better skin. Another strategy you can think about is to get a hold of a product called Yakult. Okay, I'll list it down below. Uh, that provides a specific strain of bacteria, Lactobacillus casei, subspecies or strain, uh, Sherota. This is an old bacteria. It's been around for almost a century. It was discovered almost a century ago. But the science has matured. And people who get this bacteria have a dramatic improvement in immunity, including T-cell and natural killer cell immunity. And there's a 50% reduction, 50% reduction in susceptibility to respiratory illnesses, re viral respiratory illnesses. And if should you get that viral respiratory illness, the disease is cut short by about 50%. This has been borne out in several human clinical trials. So the problem is you can buy Yakult uh, in North America, in the U.S., it only got distributed widely in 2019, it's that recent. But they sell it to as kind of a garbage product full of sugar and um, uh, maltodextrin and in, in non-fat dairy, which we, of course we don't, we don't use any non-fat dairy around here. So what I do is get a package of that a bottle of that Yakult. That bottle contains 6.5 billion CFUs, bacterial counts, Use a little bit, a tablespoon or so, and start your yogurt or other fermented food. I like yogurt just because it gives you such a big blast in bacterial counts. And do the same thing. Ferment for at least 24 hours. Consider adding a prebiotic fiber, just as we do with our rotary yogurt. And then consume that as a yogurt or other fermented foods. And that also b boosts immunity. One thing I don't know, though I suspect, is one of the things we see in the undoctored and wheat belly programs is our collection of six basic strategies develop a huge synergy when you put all of them together. What happens when you combine these additional strategies to augment immunity, including reversing the immunosenescence of aging, that is the impaired immunity that we all experience with aging? I think there's going to be a very powerful synergy that we become spectacularly uh, uh, protected against viruses and other infections. So there you go. These are some more advanced methods. You'll find more about this. You know, I can only cover so much detail in a YouTube video, but I invite you to see uh, at least the most recent post that I'll post a link to down, down below, to the Wheat Belly blog that talks about these strategies in more detail. If you're really interested in doing these things, see the other Wheat Belly blog posts, and uh, I invite you to join our conversations, including two-way video conversations, in my undoctored inner circle. And by all means, please stay safe. Continue to follow all the uh, guidelines being offered by government officials and epidemiologists and infectious disease experts. But I want you to be armed with even better information that can protect you and your family.